Signal. Signal gasoline. Yes, signal gasoline is the new gasoline you can prove is superior. Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Harvest of Death. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It wasn't a large farm, but it wasn't small either. It kept two strong men busy from sunup to sundown taking care of it. And they did a nice job because the farm prospered. Mort Grant owned the farm and lived in an awkward-looking unpainted farmhouse with his wife, Nellie. Jim Hayward was the hire man and lived in a spare bedroom. But actually, he'd been there so long that he was more like one of the family than a hired hand. And that's what worried Mort Sanders. (gasps) Mort! Scared me half to death popping in the kitchen door like that. Did I? You certainly did. You know, I'm nervous enough without you acting like a cat chasing a mouse. I've gone and broke one of my best dishes. Hello, Jim. Hello, Mort. Kind of ambitious, aren't you? Well, I surely wish that you were a little more ambitious around the house. I could use a little help now and then. A woman's work is left to the women. Men have enough to do with their own work. Is that right, Jim? Well, I guess it is, Mort, but Nellie looked a little tired, and I thought it wouldn't hurt anything if I stepped out in the kitchen and helped her a mite with the dishes. You should rest quiet a while after eating supper. I'd like to see the day when I get any rest after supper. I'm not really tired, Mort. I don't mind helping out a little extra bit. Well, if you don't mind, you can be as foolish as you want, I guess. Nobody's being foolish. I think it's downright generous of Jim to want to help. We ought to help each other more around here instead of living like three hermits. I don't see you out plowing. Come on, Jim. Leave the old lady to her work. Uh, if you don't mind, Mort, I'd just soon finish what I started. No, I don't mind, Jim. Not at all. Suit yourself. Suit yourself. Well, as I was saying, Mr. Hawley, the postman, calls Jim, and Jim comes striding down from the chicken coop. And Mr. Hawley tells him the good news. He'd think he'd had the baby instead of his wife. Well, then, he gives Jim a cigar, and you know what Jim says? I couldn't guess. Well, he says, seeing as how you're the mailman, I suppose your baby comes special delivery. (laughs) Can you tie that? Well, don't you get it? Special delivery. Well, that's Jim. Doesn't sound very funny to me. Huh. If you'd said it first, you would have thought it was funny. Maybe so. But if I said it, you wouldn't have thought it was so funny. Mort Sanders, if I hadn't been married to you all these years, I'd think you was jealous. I'm not jealous. But you do seem to enjoy Jim's company to mine. I'm only your husband. All I hear from you is Jim did this, or Jim said that, or Jim says and does the funniest things. Why don't you pay attention to me once in a while? Oh, Mort. I'm running this farm, and I'm tired of hearing what Jim does. So will you do me a favor and talk about something else? You shouldn't get so angry, Mort, because anger leads to all kinds of human excesses. You might even do something you'd be sorry for later. And regret isn't worth the time you take to indulge in it because it's always too late. Of course, if you try to get along with Nellie a little better, you wouldn't have to worry about Jim. But you can't see that, can you, Mort? So at supper time, you're the same old Mort, suspicious and foolish. Supper ready? Not for a few minutes yet. Jim won't be in for a while. He's working on the tractor. 
Well, if he can't make supper on time, that's his tough luck. Well, just the same, it isn't ready, so you'll have to wait. Well, don't you notice anything different? No. Well, look around. I still don't see anything. What's it all about? Well, if it had teeth, it'd bite you. Over there in the corner. Hmm, bookcase. <laughs> Where'd you pick up that thing? It's kind of small, and it doesn't have any books in it yet. But it is pretty, isn't it? I don't know. Where'd you get it? Nice red color. I ask you where you got it. Well, for goodness sake, stop shouting. I can hear you. Jim made it. Hmm. What'd he do that for? Well, how do I know what he did it for? I guess maybe he heard me say once that I wished I had a bookcase and thought it'd be a nice thing for him to make one for me. Oh, he did, did he? How much further is he going to go with this sort of thing? He acts as if he was your husband instead of me. Well, Lord knows you never buy anything for me. Pinching every penny. What I do with my money is my business. Oh, now, Mort, don't get your blood up. Now, why shouldn't I get my blood up? You seem to be interested in Jim more than anything else around here, even me. Every time I turn around, you're chatting with him over in a corner where he's helping you with the dishes or you're taking a fancy ride together into town. And if that ain't enough, every time you open your mouth, Jim pops out. Now, Mort. Don't now, Mort, me. I've had enough of it. Now that bookcase. Well, it's only a little gift, and it is pretty. Well, it won't be pretty when I get through with it. Mort, what are you going to do? Just watch me. You don't even own a book to put in this. I don't like useless furniture cluttering up my house. Oh, Mort, for heaven's sake, stop it. Are you going crazy? No, I'm just getting some sense. If you so much as lay a finger on that bookcase, I'll never speak to you as long as I live. Well, stop talking then, because here it goes. <gasps> Mort, no! There. Here, take a look at your fine gift from Jim now. I hate you. You'll get over it. When Jim finds out if he's half the man I think he is, he'll beat you to a pulp. Where is he? I told you he was working on the tractor. For your information, fine lady, I'm going out and fire him. I don't want any wife stealer working for me. Hello, Mort. Supper almost ready? Almost. I won't be able to finish this tractor tonight, I'm afraid. Turned out to be more work than I thought. The wrist pins... Never need... mind. Give me the wrench, Jim. Oh, you want to take a hand at it? No, but you won't be needing this wrench anymore. What do you mean? Hand it over. All right, Mort. Anything you say. Here it is. Thanks. Now, what's it all about? You look like you've got something serious in your mind. I just come out to tell you I won't be needing your services around here anymore. Huh? You can leave as soon as you get your things together. I'll pay it at the end of the week. Oh, you can't mean that you're firing me, Mort. That's exactly what I mean. But I don't get it. I've always worked hard. Why, I, I always thought of this place as sort of like home. That's yeah, a trouble, Jim. You've been acting as if you owned a farm instead of me. Well, now, look, Mort. If I said anything to make you mad, I, I'm sorry. I don't mind you taking a big interest in the farm. But when you start moving in on my wife, that's where I draw the line. Your wife? Yeah. Why... I haven't done anything to your wife. Why, Nellie and I, well, we get along, That's but... the trouble. You get along too well. Every time I look around, you're with her, telling her stories or taking her someplace or making something for her, and I don't like it. I don't want to be see any more of it. So get your clothes together and get out. Now, look, Mort, you're talking kind of rough. I'll talk any way I want to. It's my land, my farm, and my wife we're discussing. I'm sick and tired of having a dishonest wife-stealing, backstabbing farmhand around here, so get out before I throw you out. Those are big words. You want some bigger ones? If you think you're big enough to say them. As a matter of fact, there's a few things I can say myself. I never worked for such a miserly, selfish old coot like you before. Won't even trust a bank with your money. That's enough out of you, Jim. There's one more thing I always wanted to give you before I left. A punch in the nose. Stay away from me, Jim. Put him up, Mort. I'll give you a chance to back up them big words of yours. All right. You ask for it. Mort, put down that wrench. Try and make it. I'll be taking a there. You got the wrench, all right. Jim. Jim, you'll be okay in a minute. Jim, wake up. He, he's dead. <laughs> If we of the Whistler cast sound a bit on the excited side tonight, there's a good reason. 
This is the 100th consecutive performance of Signal Oil Company's program, The Whistler. Because of your enthusiastic letters, Signal Oil Company has continued The Whistler without interruption even through the summer when so many programs go off the air. And month after month, The Whistler's popularity has grown until for the past eight months, it has ranked tops in popularity among all West Coast programs. We of the cast want to thank you for your loyalty, which has made this record possible. It's our richest incentive to keep every performance a top performance, so you'll continue to tune in on the Signal Oil program each Monday night for more broadcasts of The Whistler. And incidentally, next time you're out driving, we of the cast also hope you'll stop at one of the friendly service stations displaying Signal's familiar yellow and black circle sign. And try that other great Signal success, the new Signal gasoline. There's no better way to tune in top performance for your car than with today's power-packed new super fuel, new Signal gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Mort, it seems you've reaped a bigger harvest than you ever imagined from the little hatred you sowed. But it's not a crop to be proud of because it's a harvest of death. After you killed Jim Hayward, you didn't know what to do with his body. You had to think. But thinking takes time. So after finding a temporary hiding place in the barn, deep in the soft, fragrant haymow, you turn back to the house for supper. Supper ready? It's all ready. Sit down. Coffee or milk? Coffee. Mm, sit still. I'll get it. Here. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Oh, yeah. You startled me, I guess. Where's the sugar? Where's the sugar? Well, land sake, it's right in front of you. What's the matter? Can't you see? Uh, I didn't notice it. Well, isn't Jim coming in? Hmm? I said, isn't Jim coming in? Not right away. Well, he can't work much longer. It'll be dark in a few minutes. The potatoes will be cold if he doesn't come in soon. I knew you wouldn't fire him. You couldn't fire Jim, not after he's been with us all Cut day. it, will you? All right, Mort. I uh, took care of the bookcase. I finished breaking it up, and I put it in the stove. When Jim comes in, I'll say... Jim, I'll say, I got some bad news for you. But I expect you can take it. Seems I fell up against the bookcase. It uh, wasn't very big anyhow, you know, and I broke it. Mort, you're not eating a thing. Huh? Oh, I was listening to you. Well, it's about the first time you ever were. Well, Jim should be in here by now. I think maybe I'll look out the window and wave to him to come in and eat his supper. Mort. What? It's getting dark, and I can just barely see the tractor, but I can't see hide nor hair of Jim. Can't see anything moving out there. Sit down and eat your supper. Jim's old enough to take care of himself. Oh, I suppose he's putting the tools away. Jim's always the careful one. Mort, you're still not eating. I'm not very hungry. I bet Jim's got a big appetite tonight. Will you stop talking about Jim? Well, for heaven's sake, Mort, what's got into you? You don't have to shout like that. You're scared to live in daylight, Tally. I asked you before to stop talking about Jim. I was just trying to be sociable. With you sitting there like a mummy, a body could go crazy for something to do. Well, if you want to know, Jim won't be having supper tonight. So you can stop waiting for him. Why won't he have supper tonight? Because I did what I said I was going to do. You mean that you fired him? Yes, I fired him. Well, of all the Nellie, selfish... I don't want to hear one word out of you about it. It's done, that's all, and there's nothing you can do to change it. All right, Mort, if Jim's fired, he's fired. But I don't... Shut think... up. Well, at least he can have one more meal before he goes. Candy? Jim's gone. Gone already? Yes, he's gone already. How many times do I have to say it? Well, it seems funny he didn't say goodbye to me. He didn't even come after his clothes and things. Oh, he can't be gone yet. I told you he was gone. Gone for good. He won't be back. Did he ask you to send his clothes to him? No. 
Well, didn't he tell you where he was going? Look, he just left. He didn't tell me anything. Was he angry? A man who gets fired isn't exactly happy. Well, aren't you going to give him a character reference or something so that he can get a job someplace else? Where he's going, a reference for me isn't worth a thing. Oh, then you do know where he's going. You said before that you didn't. I don't know. All he said was that he thought he might go north, maybe to Canada. That's all he said. Well, it's funny he left late in the day like this. You'd think he'd wait until morning and get a fresh start. Can a man do what he wants with his own life without you analyzing the whole thing? But I thought I knew Jim. I thought I could tell just what he'd do. Well, you couldn't, so forget it. Well, it seems to me the whole thing's all very funny. It's all very funny. <laughs> It's 11 o'clock, Mort. Two hours past your bedtime. Mort. Hmm? What? Well, don't you feel well, Mort? That old kidney trouble isn't starting up on you again, is it? Because if it is, we still have some of the medicine left, the stuff that Dr. Kermit prescribed. I told you I'm not sick. So stop trying to give me medicine. All right, I was just trying to be helpful, that's all. After all, I am your wife. Sometimes I wonder. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Oh, forget it. I know what's bothering you, Mort. You do? Yes. You fired Jim over a petty little argument, and now you're sorry. Am I? But don't you worry. If I know Jim, he'll be back bright and early in the morning, just as if nothing had happened, and you'll both be plowing up land together just as happy as you please. Got it all figured out, haven't you? Oh, sure. Jim couldn't stay away any more than you could have him stay away. He's just like one of the family. He probably just went into town, had a few drinks to help him forget things for a while, but he'll be back as happy and friendly as ever you wait and see. How many times do I have to tell you Jim won't be back? He's gone for good. Oh, not Jim. I tell you, he's not coming back. I wish you'd stop talking about it. All right, Mort, all I can say is wait and see for yourself. Why don't you go to bed? Oh, not until you do. I'm not going to let you sit here all alone making yourself unhappy over a little mistake. Good heavens, everyone makes a little mistake now and then. It's nothing to fret over. You know, just the same, I miss Jim already myself. Oh, it used to be comforting to watch him sit in the rocking chair, rocking back and forth, just as comfortable as you please, smoking away on his pipe. Nellie, Nellie, look, the rocking chair. It's rocking back and forth. Just as if Jim were sitting there. Uh, how could it? How could it rock by itself? Well, don't get all excited, Mort. Can't you see? It's only the cat. Huh. Here, I'll chase it away if it bothers you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the chair won't rock anymore. Uh, never liked that darn cat anyway. Now, don't go blaming anything on the poor little cat. She probably misses Jim, too. I don't miss Jim. Not one bit. What makes you think I do? Well, you're sitting there like you'd lost your last friend. What's that? Somebody's coming up the stairs. Somebody's at the front door. Oh, sit still. I'll look. Maybe it's Jim. Oh, it's only the screen door banging. There. Oh, heavens, you're a nervous man tonight. It was only the screen door banging. I guess you forgot to hook it. Anyway, I fixed it. I'm going to bed. Well, at last. Now, maybe you can relax a little bit. You're so jumpy, you act as if you'd kill somebody. Nellie comes awfully close to the truth sometimes, doesn't she, Moyd? Uncomfortably close. But never mind, she doesn't really know what happened to Jim Hayward. So you go upstairs to try to sleep and forget the whole affair, if you can. Perhaps you'll even think of something to cover up your tracks forever. <gasps> oh, oh, it's you, Mort. Oh, you give me a start. I just opened my eyes and thought I saw somebody standing over me. What are you sitting up in bed at this hour of the morning for? I can't sleep. Oh, just lay back on the pillow and relax. You'll go to sleep. I can't. I tried. It's too hot or something. Want me to get up and get you some coffee or something? No, I don't want anything. Let me put the light on. Well, no wonder you're so hot. You're fully dressed. When did you do that? Uh, got up and dressed about an hour ago. 
I think I was cold. What in the world's got into you, Mort? First you're as jumpy as a thoroughbred. Then you can't sleep. Then you turn cold. And now you're too hot. Are you sure you're not sick? I told you there's nothing wrong with me. Well, you surely must be hot. The sweat's pouring right off you. Now, there's no need to get so worried about Jim that you make a nervous wreck of yourself. He'll be back, I tell you. If you mention Jim once more to me, I'll strangle you to death. All right, Mort. I I didn't mean to get you mad, but you're beginning to worry me now. Go back to sleep. Where are you going? Mind your own business. What are you lighting that lantern for? If you've got to be so nosy, I'm going out to the barn. At this hour? Are you out of your mind? Look... You just go back to sleep and keep your nose out of my business. I won't mind my own business. Mort Sanders, tell me where you're going. All right. I'm going out to the barn. I'm worried about something. One of the horses. What's the matter with it? I don't know, but she's been kind of sick today. I want to take a look at her. You're up to something, Mort, and it isn't a horse. What is it? Wouldn't you like to know? Took you long enough. So you're up. Well, I couldn't lie up there in bed while you're gallivanting around the farm at three o'clock in the morning. Get back to bed. Well, I put some coffee on. We might as well have a cup now that we're up. I don't want any coffee. Where's the lantern? Do you always have to ask him any questions? I haven't got it with me, have I? I left it in the barn. Mort, look out the window. That barn. The barn is on fire. <laughs> Pretty in it. Well, do something. You just stand there and said you weren't enjoying it. The horses in me burned alive. There are no horses in the barn. They're all out in the pasture. Mort Sanders, you're a murderer. Shut up. I won't shut up. Don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. I'm not so innocent as I look. I know why you couldn't eat and couldn't sleep. I know why you were cold one minute and then hot the next. You didn't know I knew, did you? I told you to shut up. I was looking out the window when you fired Jim. I saw you hit him with a wrench. Jim's dead and you killed him. If you ever say that again, I'll kill you. You don't frighten me. You hid Jim's body in the barn, and now you're burning it to get rid of him. You're as much to blame as I am. Jim had no right to be fooling around with my wife, and you had no right to let him. At least he was human. Not a grouchy old man who wouldn't talk half the time. Go on up to bed. I won't. Do you want to know something? I was in love with Jim, and he was in love with me. We were going to run away together. And here's something else. I don't want to hear it. You want to hear this. Yesterday, I took all the stocks and bonds that you'd bought with the money that you've saved in 15 years, the whole $20,000 worth. You were too afraid to leave in a bank, and I gave him to Jim. Are you telling me the truth? If you're lying, I'll kill you. I'm not lying. Jim had the oilskin pouch with the bonds in his inside pocket when you murdered him, and now they're burning up. I don't believe you. If you don't believe me, look in the steel box on the desk. You did. You did, you thief. You gave him all my bonds. I told you I did. Won't do you any good slapping me. They're burning up right now. I'll get them. There's still time, and then I'll get you. Hurry, Mort! Hurry! You lose your power! I'll get him. I'll get him. Don't worry. Hurry, Mort! Hurry! <laughs> you burn so bad The barn. The barn will only last long enough. I'll get him. There's, there's so much smoke and fire. I can't see. I shouldn't have poured that gasoline around. It's a roof. Holy, hold up. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, because the gasoline you use has so much to do with the performance you get from your car... I think you'd be interested in knowing how a new scientific development has put amazingly increased power into that great new super fuel, new signal gasoline. You see, science has long known that the way the atoms in gasoline molecules are arranged determines how much power you get from the gasoline. Well, in old-style gasolines, the atoms were left just as nature arranged them. But recently, certain chemists found how to rearrange the atoms in gasoline molecules in an entirely new way. The result is new signal gasoline with amazing new power. Power so immediately apparent you can feel it, see it, hear it. It's because of this superior performance you can actually recognize the moment you step on the accelerator that we urge you to let one tank full of new signal gasoline talk for itself. 
Let its quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, and longer mileage demonstrate in your own car why new signal gasoline actually is the new post-war gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. So for once you listened to your wife, Mort. For once you took her advice and hurried into the burning barn. And to death. Of course, the flames lighted the night sky and brought a crowd of neighbors, but there wasn't much they could do. They stand outside the house, watching the last glowing embers, talking in hushed tones. But you can't hear them, can you, Mort? It's awful. Awful. Both of them at once this way. Constable figures Mort must have gone in to try to save Jim. Jim was almost like one in the family, you know. Yes. Uh, What about Nellie? Is she all right? She's just sitting in there in the rocking chair by the window. Stunned, I guess. Oh, poor soul. I'd best go in and see if I can comfort her. Nellie. Oh, Miss Thompson. I've come to see if there's anything I can do, dear. No. It's all done now. Now, try to be brave, dear. I know it's a shock. But we've got to be practical. The men folks will build you a new barn, and we'll all see that you're took care of. I'll manage somehow. Why, of course you will. Is there something I could get you? Some hot tea, maybe? No, thank you, Miss Thompson. I'd... I'd just like to sit here a while. Well, of course, I understand. We're all so sorry about Mort and Jim, too. But everything will be all right. You just keep telling yourself that. Everything will be all right. Yes, Mort. They're all so sorry about you and Jim, too. And Nellie, poor Nellie, just sits there sniffling and rocking through the night in Jim's favorite rocking chair. Through the night until dawn. Then, when the last neighbor is gone, she stands up. Stares out the window for a moment toward the blackened ashes, walks to the pantry shelf, takes down the coffee can, and lifts the lid. Now, what do you think, Mort? Inside, wrapped in an old piece of oilskin, are $20,000 in stocks and bonds. And here's a surprise for you, Nellie. Those securities were not worth the paper they're written on. Mort wasn't a very smart investor. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories, and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by John Hayes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you try New Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.